Uh, I call this meeting in order for April the 21st, 2020. Welcome everybody and everybody else that's joining us on Facebook live streaming tonight. <coughs> Result of the agenda for the April 21st, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Deputy Mayor Tony, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Resolve the minutes of the April 7, 2020 regular council meeting and the April 14, 2020 committee of a whole meeting be received and approved. Moved by <coughs> Mr. Delorier, seconded by Deputy Mayor Antoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moving down to communication 6.1. Result of the letter from Minister Squires, Minister of Municipal Relations, dated April 15, 2020, be received as information. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. This is the letter in regards to you know, government basically asking municipalities to relook at their budgets. <coughs> All in favor? Period. 6.2 Resolve the building permits 920 through 1420 with a total estimated value of $223,000 be received. <coughs> Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Matoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Seven point one. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received as information. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. <coughs> Councillor Delorier. Um, one question on, on Derek's report or Mr. Poole's report on the on the backhoe. I see you have it here purchased, but there was talk of leasing the backhoe, wasn't there? Yeah, it'll be overall. Oh, but the, the payments will come out of the reserve. Okay, yeah. okay. I just couldn't. Yeah, that's not a question. Uh, yeah, just wait, Councillor White. Okay. It has to go into the boring, and because of that, we have to wait for payments of the Even though we're just borrowing from our own reserve? Yeah. Uh, okay. Mr. Poole, can you repeat that, please? Uh, the the back was currently on the borrowing section of the capital uh, the capital list in 2020, <clears throat> but the, the payments will come out of the, the equipment reserve. But because it is listed as borrowing, uh, we do have to get the simple approval for it. So, what kind of interest are they charging us on that? The province, it's two. Okay. Councilor White. Yeah, I'm not sure I read it. I apologize for that. But just there was a notice there relative to the handyman, probably coming up. But we're here now. And there was a comment relative to the fact that once the valley was notified of this case of COVID 19 in our community, they would no longer use a handyman. I don't believe Fremont Health or any of the government departments is going to notify specific communities when they have a COVID case. So there's a bit of a dilemma there. I think we should follow that up tomorrow or the next day. Uh, Mr. Kroll. Uh, yes, when, when that determination was made, uh, the province hadn't yet set any rules. They were actually letting people know there was an online list of what towns people were coming from. They, I, and you're correct, and since then they've changed it so that it's only according to Prairie Mountain Health or, or the other health departments, health authorities. So we can change that. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to 7.21. Result of the March 2020 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received as information moved by Councillor Delorier, 
seconded by Deputy Mayor Latoni. Discussion? A moment. Councilor Gray? There's something that is going to open it again. And open it easily. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Council reports. Deputy Mayor Wintoni. <clears throat> um, a lot of our meetings have been on, on hold lately. Um, I just want to remind everybody that uh, of our public hearing tomorrow on our budget. Um, if you haven't registered, please register with um, Ms. Henkelman. I encourage everyone in this community to be a part of it, and uh, there shouldn't be any excuse for not being able to participate. Um, please register. If you have questions, send those in. Um, we look forward to, or at least I look forward to, having the public's input on, on the budget uh, for 2020. Um, <clears throat> I want to send condolences to Nova Scotia. It's a, a tragic set of circumstances that are with that province. Um, you know, it just makes you feel, share feelings that um, things happen in our society and uh, that's really close to home. And, uh, and then of course, thank you to everyone in the community for doing your part with the COVID-19 crisis. Stay safe and healthy, and remember those also important rules to keep yourself safe, safe such as distancing, hand washing, um, staying home, and um, if you don't have to, and doing as little traveling as you possibly can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Friesen. Um, I echo the Nova Scotia. I have a brother, <coughs> two cousins that are RCMP, and um, they're just like a big family, so they're really feeling the pain that that, that, that lady is gone now, and her family will suffer through this. It's just a real tragedy. Um, I also <coughs> echo the stay home, stay safe. Councillor White. Uh, just uh, in particular, I want to compliment your worship. The one that you wrote uh, relative to the uh, condolences. I can tell you that uh, PMH has been meeting regularly and uh, they're extremely active. They're extremely well coordinated. And yeah, there's a, a concern with uh, PPEs, uh, protective equipments. But that's reality for the whole world. So uh, I'm not sure too much about that. So uh, they're on top of most everything that's happening, and I want to compliment uh, all the community for supporting us, uh, Councillor, with Tony mentioned. Yesterday I had the opportunity to uh, have a Zoom meeting with MP uh, Mazur, and we talked about the uh, lack of mental, in my mind, the lack of mental health funds coming to the Swan River Valley, which is uh, directed by the federal government. He uh, told us he would get to that, so I stay optimistic. Again, specifically with the COVID cases, but uh, we in the parkland, specifically North Parkland, have, a, have some mental health issues. And then today, much of the day, I've spent uh, negotiating, that's not the right word, chatting with uh, Dr. Burnside and a couple of local students. One is applying to get into medicine already, and the other one is hoping to get into medicine. So it'd be fantastic if we get two more local bright young men in this case. Uh, coming back to our valley, we, I remain optimistic that we'll be meeting with them again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Morio. Um, for me, we had our committee the whole meeting this week. Uh, and then I just want to echo uh, what's been said that through this challenging times, um, our thoughts and prayers are with the um, RCB family and all the other victims and their organizations and family in the tragic time. Um, I know in this COVID um, pandemic thing, 
uh, everybody's stress level is uh, to the max and a lot of frustrations are going on. Um, word is just keep chin up, we'll get through this. And just a reminder, as Councilor Tony said, uh, our budget meeting, uh, public hearing is tomorrow. Um, we urge everybody to join in via Zoom or whatever uh, social media device uh, that we are streaming on. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Gray. Um, well, uh, as with everyone, I'm sure everyone's going to echo the same concerns about the solution, about COVID, and about all of the other uh, issues facing our community, both large and small. Um, in terms of um, council business, there's been relatively little since um, we've been somewhat in lockdown. I can say that the um, Settlement Services Board doesn't meet anymore. We pass resolutions for approving reports, but really we have no other. Um, functions. Uh, RISE has not met. Um, I've written a couple of times to count to Councillor uh, um, Denson. Denson, that's right, uh, asking to have a meeting. I understand the Deputy Mayor has done the same um, and we haven't had any response so I think at some point we're going to have to call, just call a meeting and get on with it because uh, we actually have to get on with doing whatever we're going to do if we're going to do anything. Um, I can say that the Recreation Commission is likely to be meeting next Wednesday because Tuesday we have our uh, committee meeting, I think. So uh, if we're going to approve budget, I don't know if we've received any response to our letter to the two municipalities. I have my doubts that we have. I just haven't heard of it. We spoke to Swan Alley West today. Oh, but we spoke to them? To the uh, and <coughs> the finance officer. And are they, <coughs> they ask for more information? Yeah. Okay. Sure, we okay. So we haven't got a response. We just approved. And Minnetonka is nothing yet. And and I, the other question I have, I, I don't know if we've gotten any response in Swan Valley West to the letter that we sent with the water. No. Okay. Those were the only issues over the last two weeks. Thank you. Councilor Gloria. Uh, nothing to add that hasn't already been said. It's been pretty quiet. Uh, Council meeting wise, um, just thoughts on the tragedy from two nights ago, and uh, and making sure that we're uh, keeping our hands clean and social distancing as well. Okay, thank you. I guess for me, uh, basically the same thing that has gone already right around the table as far as the, the tragedy in, in Nova Scotia. It's, it's unreal, and our hearts go out to every single one of those people that have been affected by this. Um, as far as the COVID crisis that we're dealing with right now in our community, province, and country, I think we're doing a good job keeping, I think what Councillor Gray said a few weeks ago, keeping no curve, you know, keeping it well below curve. So I think we're doing a really good job. But we have to keep on doing that and repeating the same thing. People will start to feel a little restless as the warm days of spring are finally coming upon us and wanting to get out there, which is though no, nothing wrong with that, but if they're going out in parks, but remembering about keeping their social distance and, and, and following the, the rules that the province has set up for us in order to keep this thing away from, from us entirely and saving lives as well. With the um, economic development, I know that there's been talk about that, Councilor Gray brought up in his report, and I do believe that it's something that, yes, we need to do something about this to get it activated in some way, if it's Zoom or this or whatever, because I think we're heading in a time right now where I think that we get, we need to be on top of things with economic development, especially going through this crisis that we're dealing with. And trust me, I think that any uh, municipality or places that is going through this and they have economic development or EDO people in place and are thinking about it, they're putting plans in place and getting ready for what's going to come after this whole thing is done. So I really think that um, we need to, to get on top of this. I, I can advise that we did offer those services um, to um, when they canceled the last meeting. I wrote to everybody saying well, we could do it by video and, and uh, Councillor Denson said yes we'll do that sometime. So I don't know what that means exactly. Uh, but it hasn't meant a new meeting yet. And, and we have it already set up in this room, so that could easily be done. So 
exactly. if there's some nudging or whatever, just let okay. me know where this is going to happen. I think the next step, Your Worship, will be that Councillor uh, Wintoni and I, I, I have to relook at the, at the Constitution. I don't think, I don't think the provision for board members to actually call meetings in the Constitution. We may have to use the Corporations Act, I'm not sure, but Councillor uh, Wintoni and I think would send a joint letter saying we won't have a meeting and setting a date. Um, we, may, uh, we may call all the other councillors and get on with it and just say, look, we need to have a meeting. And either we'll get one or we won't. Right. And if we don't, then I think we will call on you to speak to the three other heads of council. Okay. Um, because something has to happen. Absolutely, I agree. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Latoni. Uh, just something to add um, to the RISE conversation. Um, I think that um, Stacy currently is in that role, um, is doing a really good job of keeping on top of things that are going on and um, continuing to work with um, existing questions and people um, talking about economic development or contacting her. So she's still in, in the loop with that and still doing working strong. Yes, we um, need to move ahead with it, but just some credit to, to her for taking care of things is is duly noted as well. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Result of the town matter report for March to April 2020. We received this information. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? <coughs> Councillor Delorier. Um, I see in the section on public <coughs> works, there, there's some talk of, of leveraging out operator skills to, I don't know, yourself or, or other people. How is that going? Do, are, are, we, are we confident that we have uh, enough skills leveraged out that we could operate it should something unfortunate happen to it? What do we have, four regular operators? Or yeah. five? Three certified. Okay. We just got certification yesterday for one of our temporary certification for one of our backup operators yesterday. Okay. And then we have one, two, three, four reserves after that. Okay. All right. Mr. Crow, do we have anything to add to that at all or any comments? Uh, uh, nothing other than uh, what, uh, what Councillor Gray said and and uh, Mayor Jacobson said the, uh, that's my recommendation for the month is that uh, we move ahead with economic development because uh, I, I uh, belong to the, uh, to the Canada Rural Institute and the Ontario Rural Institute. So we get, uh, we get uh, updates all the time on what small towns are supposed to be doing. And uh, most of the headlines right now are economic development plans are starting to be put in place, and we need to have that. And that's that's part of the reason I put that recommendation in there, which I, clearly council has already noticed that and, and is trying to move ahead with it. Okay. Yes. All right. Further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Whereas Manitoba has declared a state of emergency as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and whereas the pandemic is causing financial difficulties for many businesses and individuals, therefore, be it resolved that the proceedings to offer properties for tax, or sorry, <coughs> sale, a tax sale auction be placed on hold for a period of four months. Moved by uh, Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Resolved that in accordance with Public Utilities Board Order 5620, the Town of Swan River waived late fees on the April utility bill and the July utility bill for one month past the due date and suspend water turnoffs during the state of emergency. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried.
moving down to 9.1. Do we have a resolution for that, Mr. Crow? We don't. Uh, could, could you just come back to this because I didn't realize. Okay, so then we'll come back to 9.1, we'll go to 9.2. It'll probably consume a bit of our time. Um, so we do see um, after we had pretty much laid out what the budget was going to look like for 2020, uh, which is option A, uh, administration following some discussion or the, the letter from the minister, uh, uh, which the government was asking municipalities to relook at their budgets. So here we have been before us uh, additional B and C. So council had some time to look over this, so I will open it up for discussion. I think administration is suggesting option B, Council DeLorean. Can you, I guess, give a, <coughs> a brief summary of, of what the changes that were required to get us to option B or C? As far as like, what are the big hitters? <clears throat> well, it's uh, it's a pretty comprehensive one because actually each each department uh, had to go through and we held several meetings on it. So uh, the the changes are are in each department and really uh, what it comes down to is option B is uh, if the if the emergency lasts for the next uh, month or two and then we start getting back to normal. Uh, then, then that's what we're looking at. Um, I, I don't know what else to say other than um, in the comparison between uh, the one that we had worked on and built uh, pretty much to this point as compared to uh, option B and option C is if the bottom drops out and, and we start toward uh, second grade depression really. Um, but but the, the the thing about option B is it does does have some cutbacks, but it still allows the town to be able to uh, do work, uh, and and it doesn't it doesn't end up being a, a sort of a wash of a year in, in getting things done. We still get some things done. We're just not going to do as much as as we'd hope to. But it, the the nice thing about this is according to uh, the municipal act, we can lower the budget at any time. We just can't can increase it uh, arbitrarily. Um, so, so if we went with option B and things continued to uh, not improve, then we could actually start migrating toward option C uh, without any further uh, uh, you know, government permission or, or uh, you know, filing it with the government. It's really, as in most years, as, as councils do, they determine that uh, you know the bids came in too high or whatever it is. They decide not to do a project or not to buy an item, um, and that's all. Option option uh, C is is really take pulling a lot of stuff off of the off of the table, and that's why uh, with with all of the uh, with all the administration working together, uh, we all concluded that option B was uh, was workable option really it's, it's something that uh, we can still function as a town with uh, with some smaller budgets and, and doing some some things uh, uh, hopefully in a better way uh, it does include uh, reducing the the uh, pool project by 300,000 which uh, I'm still convinced that we can finish uh, within that number if not finished we'd be very close to it so uh, it's not as if we're pulling the, the project off the table. It's really just watching our numbers very closely. And that goes with the other projects that, uh, that Derek has reduced. I think he reduced sidewalks by 20,000 and things like that, that we're still doing some sidewalks. We're just not doing the, the, full, uh, the full menu like we were hoping to, that's all. Councilor Morial. A uh, couple questions. Um, looking at uh, page nine of the bill, option B, um, where it's, it's talking about 
Um, is, is it just me or is it numbers looking weird there compared to option A? Um, is it just calculations or, or different? It's looking at like a, a change of 21,000 down, but yet the number is higher than previous. I'm just confused on the numbers there. Pardon? What's the line item? What's the line, Councilor Morial? Um, it's under the heading fiscal where it says transfers to capital, and then it's got the, the transfers to utility reserve, like Compared from option A to option B, not making sense to me. Oh, that's option A wasn't changed. Uh, I just said I got to pull up capital. So, what changed was uh, we had the water treatment plant uh, PLC upgrade. Uh, being borne by the rates, and that'll, that'll be shown in option A. I change that to $50,000 will be will be paid for by the, the rates, $300,000 out of the water and sewer utility reserve. So that will show up in fiscal services. It should be a, a pretty substantial number, right? Like $300,000? Yeah. 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 yeah, so that, that's showing the... the I don't want to word it incorrectly. The reason is, is the rates are not paying for that capital job. The, the reserve is. Okay. I got to take a look at the fiscal status. Okay, and then one more question when it goes to uh, uh, the capital projects. Um, how come we're throttling back or reducing or not buying uh, product when it's coming out of reserves versus uh, operations? Like if we have the money in reserve, why are like, we cutting back on the sidewalk and the service truck when it's coming out of reserves? Yeah, the, the main reason why we we didn't take the back load is because we we signed the deal. Uh, the same with the same with the garbage truck. Uh, so those those, yeah. those stay. My the garbage truck is coming out of reserves, but. Uh, Basically, it was priority. We decided to take out the Third Street base project as, you know, the, the other alternative is Main Street, and just uh, felt Main Street was a higher priority. We do have that under borrowing, but uh, I guess we would rather rather see Main Street move, move forward. But my my question is, is if the funds were already coming out of reserves, um, that's not changing the the tax rate for this year, like the mill rate, why are we canceling it? Yeah, decisions, decisions weren't solely made just to just to lower the mill rate. Like we still we still have lots of money in reserves. Council knows that they can they can use those reserves if we if we do get into dire straits. Uh, you know, it, it's not a bad thing to have to have uh, capital reserves. And when I see that, like you've taken out the, the survey, and we've already got digging once on that, and we already got some work for it, like the sidewalks and stuff like that. Are are we going to get dinged again for increased costs of having this stuff being resurveyed by us having antiquated old equipment versus the stuff that's used today? That now, as opposed to what I, I just said. I did take I did take that out because that cost went directly on the mill rate. It's not being borrowed or out of reserve. That comes directly out of taxes. That was the reason why it was decided to be taken out. But I will, I'll gladly put it back in. Is that is that a, an object that can be uh, borne by gas tax? That's what we're looking into right now to see if it's eligible under the gas tax reserve. Yeah, we're still. It would be nice if it was. I don't think it is. I don't think it is here. We would have done that. Yeah, that's all I have. Okay. Uh, the small conversation here, uh, Council Morial, is that the, uh, Mr. Kroll felt that it didn't qualify, but they're looking into it. Okay. Okay. 
Um, I, would, I would personally see, like to see that get put back in because okay. we already got dinged on that once we're cutting it out of the budget. Okay, so can we put the, take a note on that then that we were considering that? Also great. Okay. I'll for, for the moment. I guess, I guess I just wanted to comment on the survey equipment as well. We basically paid for it once already a few years ago when we didn't have it and had increased uh, contractor fees. You know, I guess if, if we're really concerned about uh, what's going to be borne by, by general on, on the capital side of things, what, what uh, you know, the, roughly the, the fire, uh, fire gear washer dryer unit is roughly the same amount. What, what what are they doing now to wash their turnout gear? They have, they have something there. Is it still functional? It is, yes. It is still functional? So, you know, if, if we're, we can maybe, you know, move the ball to the other cup. Um, I, I spoke to Chief Fedor, and said that, that should be down to 3,000. They were able to get that down. It just didn't get changed on there before we posted it. So that, that amount is three. Three? Okay. Yeah. We, we apologize for these. Number screw ups as well, but it really has been a race to try to get this in front of councils. Yeah, I, I guess if we're doing any kind of work that requires surveying, I think I think it'd be prudent to have that. We we've already been bitten once. We're gonna we're basically gonna pay for it three times over if we don't don't get it. That's it for now. Councilor okay, Gray. Um, so my first question is are we ready for tomorrow I mean are we in a position to actually respond that, that's really the, the starting point for me because uh, I'm not confident there are a bunch of things here that I'm not comfortable with or confident with I, I just don't know um, I, I post things things maybe slower than everybody else and maybe uh, but I, I just like to process stuff and and there are some things from our committee of the whole meeting that don't seem to be in here, which were 0% um, increases of salary, um, $150,000 for bylaw enforcement, because that's not anywhere here, and the $100,000 for additional reserves. So just to answer Council Morio's question, um, you know, the way we, I thought we'd agree reserves were going to work was we would take money out of reserves, that's true, but we would then have a plan either this year or the next year, whatever, to pay the money back. And so it doesn't really save us anything to take money out of reserves, in my view. It just depletes reserves. And so we have to have a plan to play it back. So if we, that's fine. If we have a plan for next year that we're going to increase something to pay it back, I don't have a problem with that. But generally speaking, the idea of a reserve is so that we're not budgeting for, for lack of a better word, hot water tanks or sidewalks. We, we have a reserve we can just pay for. But we then know what we've spent, and so we should be, be refurbishing the fund in the next year, so that this year we should be taxing for last year's expenditure for reserves. Next year we'll tax for this year's expenditure for reserves, and we know that that's what's coming. So depleting re reserves at high levels is a problem, in the sense that that's going to force us, if we're going to be consistent with what we promised our citizens and ourselves we're going to do, it's going to force us to increase taxes next year, which is not going to be a good thing. Quite candidly, I don't think we're going to be through what we need to do next year. And so I, I want us to be very cautious about capital things. There are some things from the C budget that I think we should consider implementing anyway, although um, <coughs> I just want to check on something. It's my understanding that the two things we can't change once we pass our financial plan without a further public hearing are tax increases and borrow. Everything else is to some extent flexible. Um, it's not perfectly flexible, we have to go through bylaws and so on, but, but we don't require further public hearings. Is that an accurate statement? No, you can't change your budget upwards. You can change it downward. So you've got to do public hearing. Well, are you saying we couldn't use reserves to pay for something? Oh, no, you're, you're welcome to use reserves. Right. So th there's only three sources of funding as far as I'm aware. One reserves, the taxes, and borrowing. And, and we take two of them out. So we could increase our spending by withdrawing more from a reserve, but we couldn't borrow and we couldn't increase taxes, right? So aren't we wiser to budget the higher end? And there are some things I want to talk about in terms of specific budgeting items anyway, but 
Um, but are, are we not wiser to keep as high a budget as possible because it's easy to go down, it's impossible, but it is cumbersome to go up. So I think we should be cautious about reducing what we're asking for. But there are some legitimate uh, concerns. And, and as I said, there's some things that we know the C budget. I, I, I don't know that we're gonna spend a lot of money this year on on the pool. Like we, we make in a capital sense, but are we really gonna spend a lot of operational dollars on the pool? Is this the year that we go back to that? That's why if we went with, yeah. with B, it, it has the effect of uh, helping residents and businesses by lowering the taxes. Even nominally, it does lower the taxes a bit, but it, it also puts us in a position to continue to be able to do things. And at, at council's discretion, we can go to any, any item in, uh, not even in that one, you can go even further. but. But really, that could be a best line to say, okay, let's go to, to budget C if things get worse, or if, if council determines that they don't want to go ahead with the purchase or whatever. Um, once the budget's passed, it doesn't, as you know, it doesn't tie your hands to say, oh, we have to buy this new dump truck or we have to do this project. Right. Well, the money's just there for it. And there's some things, though, that we've reduced that are challenging for me. So for instance, we know that policing costs, unless we, I don't know how we would reduce policing costs. The policing costs are a bill that we have because there's a certain amount of time. And I, I you know, I had a very short time to read through Mr. Minister's letter, but one of the questions was about, are the police setting this? We have a contract with the police and we have a contract with the province and we pay a certain amount based on what they bill us. And in fact, our information is, and we should check on this and make sure, but our information is, that we're actually being subsidized in the sense that some of the outlying area policing services are actually being used in the town at a higher rate than the town are being used outside the town funded officers. So we have some issues about that, I think, that we have to consider. Um, but other things um, you know, that can't, you know, the light bill can't be changed. Uh, the, well, it's going to be what it is and whatever we project. Um, and so there are a number of things here that we should look at and say, well, we can't reduce those at all and that's one of them is the policing one and, and we haven't even as i said accounted for in here any increase as we talk about public safety you know maybe this isn't the year to do it maybe that's a debate we should have but that's not in any of the budgets that i saw so or at least i can't see it maybe it's there and i just don't see it and of course we haven't had a lot of time to talk to anyone because we only got to two o'clock this afternoon i actually have meetings until mm -hmm. four so i got here and started reading at six in all three budgets, the policing hasn't changed, though. Yes, it has. Well, by, by about a thousand dollars. No, it's more than that. C is uh, is uh, one point two one one. Yeah. B and is A is, is uh, so it's only th actually it's it's three thousand in terms of the budget. Yeah. So the 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 police cost hasn't changed. Doesn't change. There were some other. I guess it was the fire that went up more than $30,000 in A, and then still $14,000 in C. So Maybe my, I guess my question then to Mr. Kroll is that if council, I and mean, right now we don't know, I'm just throwing this out there, that the council feels that they're not ready to present this, what does that mean for tomorrow? Well, we, we would have to go and we advertise and have it sometime in May. I don't know. I, I'm just. I don't know. I agree. Really like I just brought up, so I just want to make sure that if anybody's thinking about that. Then that well, this is, this was the whole issue when this comes at the latter half of <coughs> last week, and um, yes. you know, it it makes everybody scramble. That's why the administration was in over the weekend to be able to hammer out some numbers that were at least coherent enough to say, okay, we do have a budget, and it's. It's a livable budget, which that's what we tried to find. Is all three? I mean, we could live inside all three of them. Absolutely. I guess that was going to be my next question, and you kind of answered it, but I guess I want an affirmative answer: Is will uh, the administration be able to live within these budgets? I guess. I guess the worst case for for me would be <coughs> we we go with B or C, and we come to the end of 2020, and we have a three hundred thousand dollar deficit that we just have to make up next year because. We weren't able to, to live within this, so I, so I don't see that happening uh, simply because we we have gone line by line and asked some pretty pointed questions about 
you know, it's just, can you cut it anymore? You know, what if we did this? What if we did that? And we've gone line by line in it uh, for each each one of the scenarios, and uh, and we're we're all satisfied that you know if, if that's what council chooses, that's the one we'll live in. And and, uh, and I guess we'll, our our department heads will have the, the discipline to be able to make sure that that we stick to this. Because I guess that that we've dealt with. We went for a long time never having a deficit. We've had a couple of deficits, you know, I wouldn't say back to back, but within the two deficits in the last four years or something. So it's, it's not a nice thing to have to deal with after, like it just, you, you're, you're, behind, you're 20 meters behind the starting line from all the other racers next year. And I just would not want that to happen. So if, if, if yourself and your, your department heads are committed to being able to live within whichever budget we choose, then, you know, I guess that, I, I'm just glad we have that commitment then. Well, I, I believe we are. Uh, I, I think there is some more discipline. I think Derek and I were talking about that today, that there's, a, there's a, you know, I think the attitudes have changed a little bit and we're, we are trying to bring in that idea of uh, the new public service where, where we do treat this as, as a business, although it's, you know, inherently not a business, but we do try to fiscally try to treat it as a business so that at the end of the year we're not uh, you know, begging and borrowing money, we're actually, and I, I think that's what we did. We, we did bring in you know, the end of last year, you know, was uh, was in surplus, so. Um, so if again, just one second, Councilor Morion, and then I, I just want to say something. Um, we advertised the public hearing tomorrow night based on Budget A. Yes. So if council decided to present budget B, yes, that would tell me that we would have to have a different date for a hearing no, because the public the didn't have the opportunity to see only if it was B. Out. Only if the budget goes up. Only if it went up. Yeah. Okay. Council Morio. Um, a couple things. Um, just referring back to the washer at the fire. Um, for the turnout gear, it's my understanding that, that the washer is broken. We are currently sending the turnout gear out to get it cleaned uh, with some expensive freight. So, um, if uh, Chief Orchard can confirm that with that administration tomorrow, um, that would be great. Um, but that was my understanding. So. And then um, for tomorrow's meeting, um, just looking at option between option A and option B. Uh, we're looking at like a one mil difference between the two. Um, I think we maybe personally, I think we can present with option A and then go if we have to reduce with it. Uh, CEO Pearl says we can reduce the budget later on, but if we start off with option A, we can go back because it between the two, it's only one mil. So if we're going to be scratching our heads and working the midnight oil for that. Um, or stuff that we have already debated. Um, I don't know, I, it might be senseless, but, but one mil is one mil, so. Okay, uh, Mr. Crow. Uh, I'd just like to add that uh, option B has a lot of assumptions uh, taken into it that are probably going to uh, come about, including uh, reduced, uh, reduced taxes and reduced uh, uh, revenues for, um, for different services. And that's why the one mill, I mean, we could have made pretend like we're gonna have the same amount of taxes and the same amount of services, and then we look like we look like real superheroes with the five mil decrease. But the, the fact is that the numbers probably aren't gonna add up in, in reading uh, different uh, finance journals and, and the um, different uh, municipal magazines. It's, uh, it's pretty apparent that they believe that tax revenues are going to be going down whether that is people walking away from the businesses or people walking away from their houses. Uh, Councilor Delorier. Uh, Councilor Beardis first. Uh, oh, okay. oh, was it? Okay. Um, I guess with, with all due respect to Councilor Morio, one one mill is still 4%. Um, so it is or probably even a little bit more than 4%. Uh, so it's, it's not a negligible amount, but I guess uh, the budget, you know, the, the, I guess 
it's a, it's been a thorn in my side that we do our budget is always done this late, but I guess it, it does offer the benefit of we're uh, a third of the way through the year, and it should reflect what you know, especially on the income side, it should reflect what we're pro what things are going to look like. And budget B reflects the fact that the pool staff is laid off. They've been laid off for uh, over a month now. They will be laid off for until until the pool reopens, I would think. So. This budget B is a more accurate reflection of, in that regards, of, of what things are actually going to be like. Um, budget A is budget A is you know had this never happened, that's what that's what our our things would have looked like. But that's not what happened. So, I mean, I I, I just think we have we have the ability to ha see what part of the year has brought us, and f for what we know. Our budget should reflect that. Right, yeah, no, I agree with that. Okay, uh, Councilor Gray. Um, oh. So, are have we heard whether or not the municipal government or the uh, the provincial government is going to continue with the same amounts of municipal grants? Because they just issued, uh, we just found out they've issued a directive to every university in the province to cut all. Expenditures by thirty percent. Yes, they they sent us this letter, and then we had several phone meetings with uh, uh, different people from the uh, ministry over the past uh, past few days, and they sent us a slideshow that probably went to the universities as well. And it basically, it was this is an example of uh, the slideshow for the uh, for the uh, provincial uh, different ministries and different departments on where to cut, what you should be looking at, and things like that. And then they said. Please try to mirror, make your town mirror these things, and that's where you see a lot of these changes. And that is really from the suggestions from the, the slideshow that they sent us. So. Can, can we have that? We sure can. Yeah. Okay. And and does it provide for consistent amounts of money from for the? No, no. They so don't. there's a reduction. Well, they don't say there's a reduction, but they say you, you need to do these things because things are changing and, and effectively, even from the letter, they, they've effectively said that the province is, you know, very far, they, I wouldn't say overextended themselves, but they've extended themselves uh, pretty far. And, and so, I mean, we can read the tea leaves and, and look at it and say, if nothing else, uh, you know, our, our basket funding will not be growing. Okay. Um, and, and I'm just missing something. I'm just trying to remember if those are reduced in the various budgets. Again, I, I, I like to be a little better organized, but I don't see them being greatly reduced or reduced at all. In fact, we 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 can't uh... assume that. We, we can't assume that they're going to reduce it. Okay. Now. We can we can assume that we're going to get less taxes and less revenue, which we, we've taken that into account. Right. Um, so our assessment is the same or more than last year? Slightly more. Slightly more. Yeah. And what is our mill rate right now for last year, for this year? For last year? Was it 22,308? Same, same as same as in the uh, as in the uh, uh, same as uh, uh, the one we worked on yeah, originally. Yeah. So, so there was no increase. No. For for two thousand and twenty under right. under uh, Plan A. Right. But but that was also going on the assumption of you know that these past three or four months or these next couple of months uh, was going on the assumption that all was good and. Clearly not all is good. So. Well, no, I, I understand, but but it's it's a zero percent. It was effectively a zero percent to start with, and would be going down by one mil or close to one mil uh, in over, option B. It's just over if you add them together. I think one mil. There's thirty thirteen point three three and twenty two point three oh eight, which is thirty five point six, and the other one is thirty three point six. So it's almost two. Yeah. Two mils. As far as, oh, maybe I'm looking wrong. Maybe yeah. that, that, that might be uh, option C. No, no, it's schedule B. Oh, okay. Sorry, we were still counting this out into the afternoon. So. Well, that's, that's what I see. I, I, maybe I'm wrong, uh, unless I missed it. The last page at the very end, business fees say the same 1.33%. 
but the other two are the mill rates, which are total, it seems to me, maybe I'm missing it, but at 13.33 and 22.38, isn't that what we have? Uh, yes, I believe so. And, and then under option B, and I think A, C is similar. And again, I, I get, we've only had it for a few hours, but it's 12.46 and 21.29. Right. But again, that's, that's the, the skewing effect of, of when, you, when you lower uh, revenues and taxes on one side and, and you lower your expense uh, expenditures, uh, you know, if, if, if our taxes and our revenue stayed the same and lowered our, our expenditures at the same rate, it would look like some fabulous tax cut, but really it's, uh, we're just trying to right size the community according to how we see uh, finances going and taxes going and, and keeping with mm -hmm. the fact that uh, a lot of residents and, and uh, businesses are gonna be hurting. Anything further? Uh, well, not right now. Uh, there may be as we talk about it because. Okay, so I guess. I guess what I I could I could live with with uh, with uh, presenting B tomorrow. Um, I guess I'm not super comfortable having seen it one day and presented the next, but. If that's what's being asked, I could live with that. The the paper that uh, Derek had showed me, are we able? Is all of council able? To, are you able to email that to us? It's in the document. <coughs> under 2020 budget. 2020. Okay. So I'll I'll give that a perusal tonight. To, that that's kind of the high high level overview that I was kind of looking for. So that's good. I looked through it and then set it aside. <coughs> um. Great. No, I, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm just formulating this uh, to some extent. And, and I, obviously, one of the things I want to do is know what the details are of it with the reductions or some of the reductions. But, uh, I, I'm just getting it. I yeah, just. We, um, we don't really need word on the selection. Uh, from council, as long as everybody can, by consensus, say which one by like noon tomorrow, then we can prepare our presentation and stuff according to to that one, or according to any changes that you might want to make. Because uh, uh, you know, we we when we built this, we we kind of knew that uh, maybe one councillor would say, "We'll take this out of option C and throw it into option B," and I'd be happy, whatever you know. So. So I guess on that, um, we've had discussion about the survey equipment and what it would look like if it was added back in. Uh, to find out about the laundry equipment for the fire hall. I think those are two asks, if anything, I heard tonight about keeping within that. Uh, go ahead. Uh, can I just mention, I did hear that the uh, wash machine at the fire hall was broken, but I thought it was just a fin on the tub or something. I thought it was fairly minor. I mean, clearly it's going to affect it long, long term. But right. Well, if you can yeah, find out about that. Council Glory. A um, couple of comments. On all three budgets, I guess, no matter which one we choose, I made a comment before the meeting, but you'll get the uh, emergency measures number corrected. Okay. Not to, not to nitpick over small things. Um, second thing, on the planning for the pool repairs, yes. will normally our shutdown is the month of September. Are we? I, I guess what what stage of the planning is that at? As far as it, is it going to be outside contractors? Are we going to have trouble getting them here? Will they be from you know Canadian contractors for one thing? Um, you know as far as getting people here for September. I mean, there's no point in budgeting it, budgeting that if if it's not gonna happen in September or you know, I guess, or when, when are we seeing this fit in? Okay, so the contractors that we know of for the Whirlpool and the HVAC, uh, as far as we know, 
are all Canadian at this point. You okay. get one from Saskatchewan, the rest from Manitoba, I think. Okay. Um, and once we get the once we get the drawing package in, uh, that's where we'll really be able to start dialing in what the cost actually will be. Okay. I I I heard in conversation with one contractor uh, what he thought the HVAC would be. Um, and it was quite a bit less than what everybody was suspecting. So, uh, but he hasn't handed us a, a bid yet because he wants to have the drawings before he puts a bid in. So, yeah. All right. Any further discussion on this then? Councillor Morio. Um, just looking between option A and B again here, for the follow-up on what uh, Councillor Gray was saying with the bylaw stuff, and there's no increase in there. Can admin look at tomorrow, and uh, between the savings that's been already carved out, we uh, and see what type of amount that we can put in for the last half of the year for bylaw enforcement to bolster that up some way? Yes. Yeah, about what's already there. Yeah, because by the way, it's only showing 15000 in both options A and B. Um, so there's been the, uh, our discussions of adding something in there for some type of patrolling or whatever options we are looking at hasn't been added into there. So looking at the um, couple hundred thousand dollars that's been earned. We, we, all, we also have, we talked about that this morning, and, and um, we have a pretty good budget number for our handy, handy transit van service, and we were looking at using a, a part of that to assist with the, with the bylaw uh, proposal that we're gonna have with the council. We figured with that, with the handy van number and the bylaw number, we'd be able to figure something out. Right now, the handy van number is at 519. We know that's high, but we did intend to use that number plus the bylaw number to solve our bylaw handy van animal control issue, or at least try to tackle it. Councilor Gray. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, I've had an ongoing comment about the, the handy van thing. I think the service we already provide is inadequate. So I, 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 you know, we haven't been able to find people because we're paying inadequately. So I don't know how that plan works very well for. Uh, long term. Um, I just want to go back. Uh, firstly, uh, it may be that we need to look, one of the items in here is recycling that we may need to look at. Uh, I think the truth is that that may be uh, an item that is um, outside of our capacity to continue to afford. It's one of our hugest expenditures. Um, the second is it, that all of the savings from C or more than all of the savings actually, um, come from um, some reductions. That is the pickup of, of, of costs from businesses. So when we talk about reductions in rates, we already are passing on a significant increase to businesses in the cost of, of picking up um, garbage at this point and recycling. And then all of the rest comes from the pool, essentially recreational services, which includes the, the arena and the other um, fiscal services, um, the deficit recovery, and I'm kind of, un, uh, I, I'm actually fairly uncomfortable have not paying that deficit off. I, I think that, that I agree with Council Delore. Our objective should be to get out of debt and not go back in. That was our plan. That was, that was one of the things I was most in. Um, strong about it when we talked early and and i think that's i, I think it's a mistake um, because it lets us off the hook uh, and it'll just be there for the next year anyway um, and then reserves um, so those are some of the things that i think we need to look at in terms of this i just want to go back um was there are no salary increases in these budgets we've done we've taken out any increase there's actually a couple of reductions. Um, well, I, I, there may be reductions in persons, but but in terms of wages per hour and wages per uh, for anybody, it's all zero percent, right? Zero twenty in all pages, but it's zero. Okay. 
So the right. administrations take the pay cut. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I haven't looked. I, I, I did. I looked at the numbers, and they looked at somewhat similar. And so I was just wanting to make sure. And I asked it before, and then, and then we got lost, and now we have discussions. Could, uh, on uh, Councilor Gray brought up a good point on the, the differences between uh, uh, the pool on B and C. How did we achieve what that number in Budget C? As compared to, like, I guess, what are, what are the differences that got us to that number? Uh, in B, we were opening September 1st. In C, we wouldn't open <clears throat> Okay. There's a certain irony that we still have a $300,000 bill without <laughs> opening. But. Okay. okay. Does, now, does that impact our, does that impact our grants, because we had conditions on the grants about operations. Have we looked at those? <coughs> there were triggers from the provincial and private grants that said that if we didn't operate for some period of time, right. that we had to repay. I'll, I'll check into it, but I'm pretty sure an emergency measure would. I, I, I don't know, I just want to make sure that if we do, if we, if our plan is to shut down for the year, I'm, I, I actually am not that, in this time, I'm not that, offended by the idea of doing that. Uh, I think we need to look at how we operate that pool and make it functional. I think that's all true. Um, but I, I, what I don't want is to trigger a $10 million bill, which would wipe out all of our capacity, all of our reserves and all of our capacity borrow. I think that would be sort of the worst case scenario. That's a good point. Okay, so where are we at? Um, Will uh, let administration know by noon tomorrow what our thoughts are? It, sure. The, the, isn't the real issue, um, we're not going to increase borrowing. Is there anybody, nobody's arguing for increasing a lot no. of borrowing, is there? I, I, I don't think that's on. So the real issue yet. for people is do you want to have a reduction in the mill rate or do you want to have the reduction or have the same mill rate for the coming year. That is not really the issue because if we have the same bill rate then we present A and we can cut stuff from there and we can move stuff around within it. But uh, so it's either keep the mill rate the same or reduce it. Isn't that really the question? It is. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, that tells you the answer. If you want a reduction in the mill rate it's B. If you don't it's A. Okay. Isn't it? Or am I missing something? Well, it is. Uh, we really tried to build it uh, according to what the, uh, yeah. the minister was wishing and what you know what uh, they they were sort of guiding us to do. So, well, although if they reduce our funding, candidly, um, that's going to change everything we do anyway. So, uh, I think we have to base it on on what we can do. Comfortable. One one further question on, on this backhoe. Um, why, if since, since the payment is coming out of the reserve, um, what why wouldn't we pay for it out of there rather than borrow for it? Uh, it does reduce it, and it, it affects our next two years quite significantly. Because we have to pay it back. Well, no. If, if I'm taking only a payment out, it's going to be more money to. <coughs> on the plan for the next two years, if I take out this ninety-eight thousand, it just brings us. It, it's not like I'm going to run out of money. It just brings us dangerously low. That if we get in trouble and we need to purchase something for, to provide services, we would be able to. The garbage truck was a pretty big hit. It's right out of the reserve. What's the interest rate on the on the back up? What is the interest rate? Two point three. It's for three I, years. Uh, you're going to be four years. So back was for four hundred grand. No. Ninety six. It was ninety eight thousand. Oh, ninety eight thousand. Okay. So it's oh, twenty three hundred dollars a year worth of interest to the beginning. Anything further on that? 
and we can repay it, prepay it, obviously. Yeah. So we have surplus. Hopefully that's not you, right. you'll, you'll confirm that we can prepay it for sure? Like, uh, um, uh, you know what, I'll have to check with Terry. Although that's probably not our highest interest rate, so no. if we're paying something down, we should pay down something with a higher interest rate. Sure. All right, so do we have any more discussion on that? I think we've had some good lengthy and good discussion on it. There's some questions that need to be kind of answered, but uh, overall I think that the comment was that we feel that we want to keep the taxes at par, then it's A. If we want to see reduction, then it's B. It's pretty simple, like Councilor Gray said. So we'll wait for everybody to give administration, Charles, uh, a response sometime tomorrow morning. I think that it's probably not hard to make that decision. I don't think it should even take till noon anyway. I think most of us should, should probably have that sorted out almost overnight. All right. So we fair to move on. <coughs> well, the only other expenditure um, that I wanted to um, question, and it's going to, so, Councillor White, just I don't have a heart attack. <laughs> the, the, um, is this the and and there's a, again and I don't uh, the irony of, the, of this question isn't lost on me, um, but. There are two things that I think we need to ask about specifically. One is the incentive plan. I'm not sure that we have the same amount of budget and I'm not sure we necessarily want that. And the second is doctor recruitment, whether this is a year that we can afford or want to afford doctor recruitment. Now, maybe we can't afford not to have it and I'm prepared to be convinced, but those are two expenditures I think we will want to look at. Not today and not tomorrow, but in the long run. Right, and then, you know, I, I think that's a fair question because, you know, even if, if we went with B and presented B, then then um, we could ultimately say, you know, maybe all our partners might say, you know what, guys, let's back up for this year. Yeah. And then we'll go back into it next year. That's hypothetically speaking. Councillor White. Uh, I, for one, believe this is something we can't stop. I think as soon as we take our foot off the pedal and from a recruiting perspective, we go behind. We'll probably have lost one or two, one or two babies coming. We have three, four young people in the fold that may not be here, may, may be here. Uh, I, I think if, if we can offer incentives right now, which may be an option, it depends on the Health Facilities Foundation Board, uh, that's really important, not only obviously from a health perspective, but from the monies they bring. The numbers that I've read say the average doctor brings in eight hundred thousand dollars per year to the community in which they practice. People coming for medical help, whatever. So not only is it a health need, it's a monetary need to the community and brings money back. So I, for one, would vote against any uh, reduction in that money. Okay. Well, that'll be further discussion uh, for another day. Pardon me. That'll be a discussion for another day. Absolutely, I have no problem with that. Okay. All right, so we're good with that now? Okay, so we'll move on. I see that also in, in there you had um, the survey re results that Mr. Crow popped in there uh, from our recent survey that we put out there, so you can uh, prove that if you're liking or if you have questions to Charles or. I think it's pretty straightforward as far as the information that we've received so far. 10.1. Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General check <coughs> general accounts checks number 25996 to number 26080 for a total of 173,449.11. Check number 260721 was voided. Payroll accounts checks number 44. 650 to number 4656 for a total of 90,566 and 28 cents. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Questions? I'll give you a minute.
Mike, come on, Sir Mario. Um, one that just jumped out on me here, check number 25996. Um, <laughs> pool uniforms. Um, we got a closed pool and we were debating if it should even open this year. Um, why are we buying uniforms? We often get that invoice quite a bit later. I'd have to check the date on there, but that probably would have been uniforms from January or February. Okay. So you'll get a response. No, so it makes sense to me. That's good. Okay. Further discussion? Councillor Friesen. I'm just curious about 26010, the bus lines. What what was that for? Is that freight? I'm not sure it is. Yeah? Typically it's freight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it say two six zero one zero? Yes. I mine was from zero nine to one two. Mahican bus lines. I'm thinking oh, it's probably free. Yeah, that's <clears throat> our uh, water treatment plant test samples. Thank you. Oh right, that's regularly. Okay. Any more, Councilor Deloria? Um. Our survey monkey, we must have the top of the line survey monkey, monkey if that's what we're No, at. we have incidental survey monkey, which is, uh, you just use it by the way. Okay, so this is, we don't get billed this every month then? Every month you want to use it. Every month that we want to use yeah. it. So if we don't do a survey next month, well, we, won't get, we won't get billed this. If you personally do a survey, you can get up to 10 results or something like that. Okay. But as a, as a business, as a corporation. Yeah. We're supposed to actually click on the yes on the business, so and that's why you have to pay for it. But but so we we'll, we only get billed for this amount in months that we do service. Yeah. yeah. So if we don't do a survey for three months, we don't get billed those three months. No, we don't have a year thing. Okay. Every, every time we we do it, we just go and sign up oh, okay. for a month and, and okay. do a survey. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For the discussion, <clears throat> all in favor. Oh, that's what you mean by incidental. Councillor Dory, you had something? I didn't just triggered what he meant by incidental. Okay. Resolved that bylaw 13 2019 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish waste collection, disposal, and recycling systems be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by. Councilor Delorier, discussion. It's a recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Unanimous. Resolved the bylaw number 16, 2019, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to provide for an administrative. Penalty scheme for parking and general bylaw enforcement be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. So for the uh, screening officer, we, uh, oh, I, I guess it says right here, will be appointed by resolution of council. That, so that'll be coming once you have a recommendation on, on who that person would be? Yes. Okay. Further discussion? Recorded vote, all in favor? Opposed, it's carried unanimous. Result of the pursuance of sections 152.3 of the hey, Municipal Act. Uh, are, are we gonna go back to 9.1? Oh, right, I almost <laughs> forgot about that. Thank uh, you, Councillor. Oh, no, we're not forgetting about that one. I think 9.1 needs to go into the camera because it's part of a negotiation. Oh. It's going in the camera. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. But thank you. You're right on the ball tonight. I got nothing else to do. <laughs> so, uh, result of the pursuance of sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have employee relations and property sale negotiations. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 
with us having a with the contract with OSS, can we reduce our service? Let's say if we say now for residential, we're all, we're only going to do one pickup per month because people technically are not buying as much anymore. So, do we need to, re to consider cutting that service back? Uh, well, we signed an agreement that says we aren't, so we would have to. I, honestly, I think they would be open to re renegotiate. They're, they're extremely open to us doing whatever we need to do during this COVID deal. I guess I don't, I don't know what they do. We can ask to renegotiate if that's what we really want to do. Because that, that, otherwise, we'd have to terminate. Because there might be a few bucks there that we can say. Well, I don't mean a few, probably a lot. But, but what's the data showing on their lifts? But with resident, with pardon me, say that. <coughs> What's the weights like on their lifts or or can we tell that like from the billing? Uh no, not on the billing, no. They just because it's just a it's a per tip and how many there are there are on the residential side, so But like what, they, what, what he's they told me is off? what he's told me is uh their volume wise we're we're above average for per capita. We're we're really good. Do, do we have a notion of, of whether or not the blue boxes are mostly for, could we accommodate going to twice uh, half as often? We can ask that question. Now. That's that's really the question. If the if the if the lifts are already full, then we can't. If they're, I, I know that again. I've been to the coffee group for quite a while since. Uh, sometime in March when they shut us down, but all of the old guys used to. In fact, I thought I'd, I'd score a great point because I told them, you know, we only get paid if you take out your 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 thing, and unless it's full, don't take it out. And so I had the whole group and all of their friends. They told everybody to stop taking their, their thing out unless it was full. Okay, and then and then I asked you, and you said, no, no. no it's in residential, it's 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 per household. It doesn't matter if they're out there or not. So. Then I had to go back and eat crow. But my point is that, that a lot of people, I know particularly you know, older people, aren't filling up those blue boxes at all. And the ones that are, that, that I just noticed, there's lots of cardboard. So they look full, but they're not. They're not. If they actually spent the time and cut them, they could probably be two weeks. I know I could. I don't cut a lot I know of cardboard. I know we could. Have to, so I know we could. So I was just, I'm, I'm thinking like, Every little thing that we can come up with and, and, and save. A lot of the saves, that's yeah. 500 some thousands of it, if we do it to half, even if it's not exactly half, 60%, that's 300 grand instead of 500 grand. It, it, maybe not, maybe not a, you know, if we, right now we get picked up every two weeks, right? Maybe three. Uh, yeah, instead of, I wouldn't want to go to every four, four weeks. That's but, not, I just, yeah. But yeah. maybe every three weeks or something, like, uh, yeah. Explore, yeah. explore it with them and see if they I know that might play games with as far as how to schedule that, but these guys, they deal with that all the time. They can figure that out. Mm -hmm. And though they, obviously they enjoy our business and you know, I, I do tell them where we want to go with this. We, we want to drop the commercial side of, of both and they're, they're going to be trying to jump over it. It'll be a competitive thing that they're ready for that. They, you know, they, they want to be here for that. And, and, it, and it's right now, right? Like yeah. what we're dealing with in this whole pandemic. So mm -hmm. we have to do what we can and maybe they can work with us. I will. Just my thought. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if there's nothing now, anything else, result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councilor Gray, second by Council White. All in favor? We're adjourned. Okay.